You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Castle After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Castle After Show. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Bing is for doing it. We are doing another Castle After Show here at AfterBuzz TV. This is Season 5, Episode 20, The Fast and the Furious. I'm Paige Sullivan, your host, and I am joined by my lovely co-host... Hi guys, I'm Samara Bay. And I'm Larissa Shamar. Yes, Bam Erickson is not here to join us this week, but hopefully he'll be back next week. He missed kind of a fun, goofy episode. So, I mean, luckily there wasn't too much going on like it seems next week's going to be. So this was yeah. more of a lighthearted, fun castle. It was kind of like a fluffy castle, you know what I mean? There yeah. wasn't a lot of- Fluffy and furry. Yeah, I, <laughs> fluffy and furry. It was Bigfoot. No, I feel like, you know, when they say news, like, oh, that's a fluff story. Like, I feel like this was a fluff totally. episode. Yeah. I don't know. What were your thoughts on Bigfoot? I mean, I'm not a real big believer in Bigfoot, but, you know, Castle just kind of <laughs> made it, like, super, like, fun and entertaining because he, like, he's a writer, and he kind of believes in certain things. He's just, like, he was so, like, it's a Bigfoot, it's a Bigfoot, and everybody's just like, uh... Stop being a kid. Ryan was super into it as well. That, I thought, was actually, that was a change. Yeah. I mean, what I was stuck thinking was their pattern is so consistent where, you know, of course Castle believes in the crazy things and yeah. Beckett rolls her eyes and then he rolls his eyes at her rolling her eyes, you know. And yeah. So they played it out exactly as we would have expected. Okay. And I, there's a part of us that have probably all felt satisfied by that and also a little bit like, all right, uh, we've seen yeah. this already. And then, yeah, it was actually nice to have Ryan chime in in those adorable moments when they mm -hmm. were all uh it was kind of like ryan and castle and beck and esposito they're just like really yeah you know. they were like split down the middle but i feel like we saw a, a little bit of this we got hints of it from ryan in that episode scared to death um when he was kind of freaked out and they didn't want to watch that video oh, because yeah. they didn't want to die so you kind of see that they do they're less like beckett they're not so serious and they're not so these are the facts this is a person, yeah, I'm going to solve the case. They're willing to play into it. And I don't even know if they're just trying to say, you know, guys versus a girl, you know what I mean? Like, the girl's a little more logical, and guys just... But in this time, you're sort of Espo, Espo kind of took the Beckett role in this one. He did. And was a little more like, dude... This is this is a real thing. It's a person. I love that. I love that they call them the B team in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> they said out loud, and we all know. It's kind of like you get like no respect. Like, oh yeah, here's the B team. Right? And he's like, oh, that's what you call us. Right? Yeah. And he's like, oh no, 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 I just wanted to rub it in Castle's face. Like, Talking I about which, obviously, this Perlmutter dude was back, mm -hmm. annoying yeah. everybody instead of. Laney. I think that's yeah. his job, though. I think he's there to annoy us. I think he's there to be the kind of uppity guy that we don't like and so sometimes I have such a low tolerance for certain characters I'm like oh my gosh I don't want them in the show but I think that's why they're there they're they're that person in the precinct and then they're, they're that person yeah. on the show as but well but I wonder what the, kind of like what's the choice why right. do they I mean I'm just curious I don't know we also haven't seen Gates um we didn't see her this episode we didn't see Lainey we Lainey. didn't see yeah um, I mean, I, I know, you know, they try and give everybody their fair time, but yeah, Perlmutter's definitely been a bigger presence this season, and I don't really like him that much. He's just kind of, like, bland. Like, I mean, he doesn't bring any, like, you know, obviously whenever Lainey's there, she does the A plot, which is, like, she helps move forward. You know, I did the forensics or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not the yeah. right word on the dead per person's body, but whatever. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh. Uh, but then she also brings, she always also adds, like, a B plot element of, like, you know, whatever the sexual tension of the week mm -hmm. happens to. Yeah. And with Perlmutter, not so much of the uh, B plot sexual tension. Yeah. No, <laughs> and she's just to annoy Castle. Yeah, but she also... Um, 
plays the role of best friend a lot. When mm-hmm. Castle and Beckett were going through that episode where she thought he was a murderer, yeah. and you see them on the couch talking it out. Uh, I mean, Lainey is still, right. she's not just in the precinct. She's just like the rest of them. They're all friends. They have a life outside of the precinct. Yeah. So it's kind of strange that we really haven't seen her, but... I mean, I know Bam's always very disappointed when we don't see her. I, I like Lainey, but, you know, I really like all of the characters, and I like that we've really been seeing, you know, more of the quirky things. Yeah, it's been more, like, character development out of each person. Like, yeah. It seems like every episode is starting to be like, oh, well, it's either Castle, or it's either Becca, or it's either Esposito, or, or it's Ryan episode. So, I mean, that's kind of a good thing. How about this new girl? That's yeah. So we're gonna call her that new girl. <laughs> the, the new audio tech. The whole time girl, we were watching like, it, Paige was like, "Did she have a name? Did she have a name? Like, Are they gonna give her a name? Are they gonna give her a name?" <laughs> I mean, totally. I, we kind of yeah. all got the impression yeah. they were re, they were introducing a new somebody new. Uh, yeah, she's the um, map girl. Yeah, with the she's crazy like, board. Audio finger, tech yeah. Girl. She's I like, feel uh, like we haven't really seen much of that in Castle. We don't see the crazy technology kind of things. It's that whiteboard and they write on it and put pictures up on it but other crime shows are really big into you know oh we zoomed in on this or we did this and we saw that for the first time today and I really do feel like she's being introduced yeah I do too and they're they're ushering in a new era of technology but we have seen a little bit of that and I've definitely seen before the thing I mean I think they just did it for the big finale before uh, uh, Alexis was discovered in Mm -hmm. France where they Mm -hmm. like bring up the volume of some sound right, at a distance right. and that yeah. helps you to you know which I love that that was Beckett's like secret weapon she was she along with Map Girl Map Girl helped find where she Bigfoot was, yeah was I, I just think it's funny because I feel like they play more by you know outside of the technological world. I mean, we're, we're used to not seeing that. They do bring it in once in a while, but this was a big... I was kind of thrown off by it. I was like, where did this board come from? It was like yeah. when you got smart boards it in high It came from the future. <laughs> it's like, we, right? we need you, new yeah. girl. But I, I think she's going to be a character. It's kind of, it's, you know, it's kind of bad. We kind of dress her as girl. like new girl and stuff. Yeah. So everybody, when we actually get to know her name, it's like, oh, like, her name was like Barbara. Right. Yeah. Like, Barbara. Let's the, call her Barbara. 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 The Barbara. new girl. Yeah. But, but the new girl, Barbara. Um, I definitely think she's going to be coming back. She yeah. definitely, like you said, an introduction for sure. She's, I think, going to play a kind of, you know, a reoccurring role in this series. Maybe for the rest of the se- season. I don't know. I mean, there's only a few more episodes left, but. Yeah. Maybe she and Espo will have a yeah. love triangle. Well, she's lady. pretty. I mean, she's pretty and, Very I mean. Very attractive. Yeah, I feel <laughs> very attractive. Very <clears throat> Our resident male has weighed in. <laughs> hey, you know. <laughs> you have eyes, that's all I'm saying. She's got eyes. Well, okay, so now that we've met the new girl, we, the three of us, don't really believe in Bigfoot. I'm not sure about you guys at home. You can weigh in on that on iTunes if you like, because I'm sure a lot of you are big believers in Bigfoot, as many people out in the world are. Um, so rate, comment, tell us what you're thinking. It only takes a minute. Uh, but... In terms of the episode, Bigfoot, it didn't really play out the way Castle wanted it to. So, I mean, (laughs) this murder was so strange, and there were so many different aspects, because it was technically two murders that we were solving. It's true. It ended up being, yeah. It was. Yeah, so we have Anne, who's a Native American who is working with chimpanzees, and she's found, she's dropped off at an ER by a blue sedan, and she's kind of had her face, like, mauled a little bit. Um, and so she's dropped off, and she dies later. And they find, Pearl Mother finds, you know, the glass in her head and a pendant in her stomach. So things are really weird. It's kind of hard to swallow. I know. I'm like, but in desperate wait, situations. The, the glass never ended up paying off. Yes, it did. It was yes, the it lens was. Was from the, the camera. The camera that was smashed in the woods that basically, like, she's... Like she oh, had right, like that course, automatic course, like video camera. recording her system. Camera. Her camera, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was her camera was kind of smashed into her head, which I was kind of like, uh, okay, Seems gross. Unnecessary, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the one hammered thing, was the term ha- they used. Hammered, hammered into her head. skull. <laughs> so, uh, I know. I was like, oh see, god. Can you imagine what type of indentation that they did? Yes, I can. We we got to see it up close. <laughs> yeah, but here's my thing. Okay, so she was beaten with a club, right? And so. That's how she died, because of the blunt force trauma to the head. Here's my one thing. We never really found out how she had that big thing on her face, because the person who killed her doesn't have claws, and if he only used that club, it really doesn't make any sense to me that her face would have been mauled. Maybe so. <gasps> Bigfoot came up after her. Yes, but seriously, like, I wish they would have tied that it's in. It's true. Because yeah, you're absolutely right. The yeah. whole thing about Bigfoot was because her face was torn up, and they thought, was it a chimpanzee? Was it a pit bull? Was it, you know, a the, guy who happened to have a, a hook? hook. <laughs> it was like hook. a terrible scar. 
what, on her face? Yeah. Yeah, well, she died, so. So, it's not going to scar. It was a terrible scar. It's just going to be what it is. I mean, I feel like. Scar. Can you call it a scar if you scar. die from it? No. <laughs> no. It's a blood trauma that left a scar. But that's my one, my one thing with this episode, is that they didn't really tie up the loose ends on that aspect. But yeah. Because that's how we came to Bigfoot. She has this thing on her face. And then we, we are taken back to her, the scene of the crime, what we think is the scene of the crime where her blood is, and there's Bigfoot footprints. And mm, so... Yeah. That was kind of weird. Yeah. Well, but you know what, though? I mean, but they kind of point out the whole thing of was uh, the mission monster, the million-dollar, like, grand prize to anybody who spot Bigfoot. So I can understand why I was like, oh, like, the old lady had a, a, a handprint, a ginormous handprint on her windows, like, he tried to break in my house. She's probably just paid Shaquille O'Neal to come over back with that. It's kind of, like, weird. So, I mean, I guess, like, people kind of do, like, the craziest thing. Well, when people, when there's money on the line, people will do lots of things. But I think what Castle wanted us to believe the show was that she truly believed in Bigfoot. And that's why she, she'd she seen it when she was younger. Because that's what uh, Dr. Meeks, is that how you yes. say it? Yeah. Do- Dr. Daryl Meeks, he's a Bigfoot enthusiast, claims he's seen him, was in contact with Anne. She, you know... What is Native American, and apparently they believe that Bigfoot is a protector. Is that what I think they were Within saying? Native American. Yeah, yeah, and that she'd seen Bigfoot when she was younger, so she dedicated her whole life to finding, you know, out more about Bigfoot. So, just except weird. for the last three months of her life, which she t- seems to have taken time off taking time to off. dedicate to dealing with her. It's kind of coincidence though, because like, oh, she saw Bigfoot as a, as a kid, but she she ended up working at this primate sanctuary, you know, around all these like. Well, uh, she got. It's not coincidence. She's she meant to. Yeah, she yeah. meant to work there. She wanted to work there. But it's just crazy to me that she... I just think it's funny that she was obsessed with Bigfoot or really wanted Bigfoot to be a part of her career, basically. Um, But that's when she does go off track, that's when people come to her for the Bigfoot information. Because we have Chuck... Or Chase Diggins uh, was coming after her and, like, trying to get information. And she was planting evidence. So I think she was, like you were saying, preoccupied trying to figure out kind of what happened in the other murder, um, more so than the Bigfoot thing. She didn't really care about that at this point in time. Yes, although we, apparently, we, did we find out that she did or she didn't plant the uh, the, the footprints? I think she, that she, she did, did do that. She, she did. did. The footprints. Well, she I mean, we didn't off. we didn't find the fake feet or anything, but um, Chuck Diggins said. Yes, and Chuck Diggins. Can you imagine, how, yes, can you imagine Diggins. how big that foot was? Knows what he just sat it on the table like, it's a Bigfoot foot. This is Bigfoot foot. <laughs> no, I mean, I think the whole Bigfoot thing was kind of funny and crazy, yeah. and Castle was really playing into it. But the murder, so we're kind of coming along to different people, and we find out that she had a roommate who was murdered, and her name was Justine. And just, and what did you think about Justine's look? I don't mean to be judgmental, <laughs> but her, I, I had the this same haircut. Topic. I had the same haircut in really? the 90s, yeah. yes, with wow. the bangs and the as short hair. As soon as you said that, I was like, "That's there's 902 and no all over oh, that. Oh, gosh, and I just wish, <laughs> I wish I had one of those stretchy choker necklaces on, you know what I mean? The black uh, one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we never met Justine, but so maybe it was an old picture, mm-hmm. but um, she looked very 90s to me. Mm-hmm. Um, not even anything remotely like her roommate Anne, like no fashion. No, no. Nah, but, totally okay, different. but unrelated. Unrelated, Justine was murdered brutally in her apartment. Yeah, about a about year ago. About a year ago, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And so Anne apparently took it pretty hard, but which we don't find out until later, but everybody assumes it's her boyfriend. Yeah. Um, Who's and been in hiding ever since. Yeah, and his name is Kurt, right? Will, Kurt. Kurt Walter. Kurt Wilson. Wilson. Kurt, Kurt Wilson. Wilson. Mm-hmm. There's so many names in these cast episodes. Kurt yep. Wilson. And so he was a football player, and they assumed that he had violent tendencies, so it must have been him. And she had recently dropped out of school, and so they assumed she was trying to get away from him. Which, I mean, I'm a big believer in, you know, innocent until proven guilty. I think that everybody should, you know, get that in their life. But Kurt apparently didn't think that was going to happen and fled. And he's been MIA since. And this was about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then there comes that. So we we jump to thinking, it's not Bigfoot, it's Kurt. They're yeah. always blaming yeah. on the ex. <laughs> but, and, and, and there's this pendant issue as well. Which right. Which all ends up... 
tying a pretty little bow on this murder, basically, mm -hmm. which is so creepy to me. I mean, that's the one thing. I know we're dealing with murders every week on Castle, but they make it fun and lighthearted that I, I don't just feel like that. I was just having that same thought. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't feel like it's so, you know, depressing as if I was watching a different, like, a CSI show. You know, you're like, you feel for everybody. And I feel for the people in these episodes, but Castle's cracking jokes, and he's getting stuck in traps, and there's a fake Bigfoot, and it's it's just not very serious. And But then you think back, oh, this girl was brutally murdered by a man who was obsessed with her and he even took her pendant as like a keepsake. I mean that freaks me that's out. Like, that's Most like murderers that serial do killer they kind of like actually keep something to do like they? memorize. Do yeah. they? I mean I'm not a murderer. In your experience? <laughs> I'm not a murderer. <laughs> I'm not Please. a murderer. <laughs> Don't tell the fans that. <laughs> <laughs> nah. No but it's definitely like culturally a thing we hear about yeah. uh, among particularly serial killers. I mean people who have sort of a psychosis about this. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems I mean we find out that the person who murdered her had a pattern of this kind of behavior. Um, but so that brings us to Kurt, who we had think, a very heartfelt yeah. reaction when they yeah. when they finally, you know, Catch brought him. him in. I feel, well, you figure there's something happening because he was seen in the parking garage, looked like a homeless man, seen in the parking garage at Ann's work. Yeah. Um, oh, by the way, who told us that? The guy named Franco who was working with the apes. The apes. I feel like there was like like more than a little Planet of the Apes underlining like, uh, there. Yeah, but you know the funny thing about the apes though, when we <laughs> actually first went to the primate sanctuary, ha, huh, a castle, which oh, is yeah. like you know trying to be communicate with the ape, and the ape kept doing like all the aggressive things to him, mm -hmm. and then like finally the ape was just like. <laughs> like, How did they weird. did they like get somebody to do a mechanized ape? I, mean, I don't know, special effects or maybe just very well trained ape. I yeah. Uh, I mean, people are really like like gorillas and monkeys and stuff. If you go to the zoo, people love that stuff. I mean, I like that stuff. So yeah, every no, time I, I go was, to the zoo, you know what they they be doing? Sitting down. Yeah, they it, all it, they do is sit and they sleep. throw hay all over themselves. That's Nothing. what they do. I was, no, I was there once, and the, the guy who just picked, like, the big gorilla, the biggest one, like, picked up hay and was just throwing it everywhere. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is entertaining. But I've never seen a gorilla, or if that was an ape, act the way it did towards Castle. Yeah. So I, I'm wondering if it's a trained animal or not. Somebody in a gorilla That's suit. Does anybody know? Does anybody who's watching know? Tell us. Yeah, tweet us. Tweet me. Let me know. <laughs> like, tweet me. Well, I want to know. I'm going to, like, find out who trained this animal. I mean, that's crazy. But they can make animals do some crazy things. Yeah. Not make, but, like, train them to do crazy mm -hmm. things. That is true. But it didn't feel like that there must have been, like, Castle must have, they must have set aside a certain amount of their budget just to make that, like, mm -hmm. little exchange happen. Yeah. yeah. I just, I couldn't help but watch it. Like, I guess it's the Hollywood girl in me, but I couldn't help but watch it thinking, like, wow, they invested. In right. <laughs> Maybe that's why the rest of the episode was so fluffy. Oh, no! <laughs> but, uh, this is going to be a light episode. We're on the budget. On the, on the, on the, on the It's all about one word, moonshine. moonshine. <laughs> Love the name. Love the name for yeah. that animal, though. But, yeah, that was funny. That's what I liked about this episode, though, as opposed to the ones we've had recently. It was really funny and very, you know, quirky, and there was a lot of banter going on, especially between Be Beckett and Castle yeah. in bed Adorable. and stuff. Oh, and when, uh, yeah. when and they catch Alexis stealing food. Oh I mean, but they were about to get it on, and I just feel like it's so awkward watching that. Like, I feel like isn't that funny? <laughs> I know. Do you guys feel like I, I I feel uncomfortable? Not uncomfortable. Like some shows, you're like there is chemistry, you know, drawing them together, and there's chemistry between the two of them. Like it's when they're like talking and stuff, two it's, roommates. Yeah, it's, it's just. It's, 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 I mean, this is of roommates. course this is the any any producer's fear that you put the whole the two people who have the sexual tension together and the and tension no... disappears. I mean, it's partly that they're wearing you know like Sweats. we're a married couple outfit, and it's partly that they're getting into bed in a very unsexual way, and he's reading Bigfoot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they've been doing more of it though. Like when he wheeled away last episode, and she was like, "Follow me," or she like sat on his lap or whatever. Yeah. Uh, they've been doing a lot more of the sexy stuff, um, and maybe it is just kind of like a regular couple though. I mean, you figure regular couples in real life, there's a ton of sexual tension. I mean, it's all exciting in the beginning, mm -hmm. and then you're in a relationship, and you you ultimately just become best friends. I mean, you do that stuff, but you're mostly best friends, and so maybe that's where Castle and Beckett are. And in a way, uh, piggybacking off of that, I mean, uh, do you guys feel like you've seen any other television couples that just seem, like, happy? No. no. See, that's I mean, thing. it's yeah. almost, like, weirdly conflict-free <clears throat> right now, which, of course, is going to lead us to next week, and maybe there'll be, you know, more interesting bumps along yeah. the way. But I, I kind of... 
I don't know how much it entertains me to see them having no conflict, but part of me is very grateful to like mm -hmm. get to see some nice just but a, yeah, just a like, like sane couple. Right? When they have like conflict, it's like, oh, they start off happy. Then it's like a bump in the road. By the time the end of the episode, it's like, oh, everything's back to normal. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I like seeing it. I agree with you, Smart. I like finally having a show. I like when shows do something different. And, I mean, everybody says you can't let the two main characters get together because then it just, you know, ends. So it's like a Friends thing. Ross and Rachel break up. They get back together. They break up. Get back together. I like How, that. You like that. But, I mean, sometimes it's it, you want to watch TV that you can relate to. I mean, even on reality TV, it's so, like, blown out of proportion. Yeah. Sometimes it's nice just to be able to look at Beckett and Castle and say, oh, I, you know, I can see that. And they're pretty, and they still get into their like regular tiffs when they fell into the pit. The pit. Uh -huh. You know, he acted exactly like you'd expect. She acted exactly <laughs> as you'd expect. Mm -hmm. They had their, you know, disagreements. She gets out, he doesn't, you know. I think it's so funny though when they fell in the pit that she still has the role, like she protects Castle. You know, in most situations, I mean, this is assigning gender roles, I guess, but if I were to fall in a pit with my boyfriend, I'd be like, help me. What are you doing? Beckett's just like, push me up, get me out of here, I'll get you a rope. Right, like, and he's like, don't I, leave I guess me. the biggest yeah. thing, that, like, in that case, I would rather, like, have my girl go out first. <laughs> Just cause the simple fact that I wouldn't want to leave her in a hole by herself. That's sure, true. Sure. That's true. Sure, sure. But Castle didn't even attempt at trying to get no. out. <laughs> Beckett no. was pulling no. on roots and I attempting. Mean, you're, what you're what you're hitting on is something that is very fundamental to the show and probably yeah. what honestly probably why a lot of women like this show, mm -hmm. which is that Beckett totally wears the pants and mm -hmm. Castle's you know the ineffectual guy who doesn't have the gun who trails along after her. He's still the man. Well, okay, you have to think <laughs> Castle in every aspect of his life kind of takes a back seat to the women in his life. I mean, his mother yeah. still lives with him and she has a lot of control, always snapping her fingers and running around. And Alexis, we see kind of, you know, <laughs> she's been stealing food, but she also, <laughs> she kind of has him wrapped around her finger. You, you never really see them act like father and daughter. And almost you feel <clears> like he said, if she needs more money, she can ask me. You know, most kids would be like, oh, I want money, but I can't ask my parents. Right. Or, I think he's uh, more of a, just a ladies pleaser. A ladies pleaser. Yeah. Is that, is that he, category? Yeah, he's just kind of like, you know, he's kind of real relaxed, and, you know, as long as they're happy, he's happy. Yeah, I mean, it does really seem it like works. that. I mean, and I, I'm sure there's people out there, ladies in the real world, if you're looking for a lady pleaser, um, <laughs> <laughs> they may be there. I don't know where they are, but you may, you may find one. Just like Bigfoot, they're just like this creature that roams the earth <laughs> that nobody can find. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, guys are great. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you, thank you. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. But so going into when they fell in the hole, we have the the fake Bigfoot, which I honestly for a second was like, wow, Castle's really doing this? They're like putting a mythical creature in, because he was growling and stuff and acting all crazy. Oh, I know, I yeah, was like, was. Paige, just wait a minute. I know, I even said that. I was like, what, Castle's doing this? Like, yeah. this is real? Yeah, and then it was Meek's. I don't even know how he carries that costume. He's such oh, a little the, man. And it was so convoluted. He was looking for Bigfoot, so of course, why not create a Bigfoot outfit yeah. to look for Bigfoot in? Yeah, he's like, well, that's why I smell like this, and I, I heard Bigfoot make, like, or calls, and that was Castle, obviously, but doing you, but that. But you know, it's like one of those things that people really start to believe in, and they like, I have to be part of that in an action and be be something that I believe in. I mean, Comic-Con. Yeah. 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 Oh, gosh, Yeah. <laughs> Or just like, but I just I do feel a little. Don't you think a little bit like some some writer on the you know on the staff of Castles like wouldn't it be awesome if Bigfoot came out and then it turned <laughs> out to be a person and then they had to work backwards and be like how could somebody who would have possibly right? the logic was a little off. But you know the yeah. crazy thing like I said it when I was watching I was like. They found this guy who dressed up as Bigfoot, but they had like handcuffs big enough to fit. <laughs> yeah, just like, uh, just, uh, just, we just have him in the like, trunk of your car. Look the other like, way. Yeah. Look the other way. Look the I other way. Right? <laughs> I mean, this whole episode, it's funny because I feel like. We knew well, Samara called the murderer from the start. Yeah, she but we did. had. Because I mean, hello. When they I first know. went to his place, he's like, "That is terrible." I know. <laughs> I, know. I know. It's always the person who always like act like they have no interaction with anybody. Just like. I can't believe that happened. And he was so offended that they were accusing the apes. He's like, they didn't do what I did. Like, <laughs> obviously. Uh, no, because we went from Eddie, the guy with the car who dropped her off, which, yeah. you know, people, they can change, you know, apparently because he has a bad rap. and so he Yeah, so he saved somebody. That's such a and correct 
Turn. Rehabilitated, yeah. Such isn't that what the right, right? That's not, what they say. That's what the justice system's for, right? Such to a rehabilitate. rehabilitated person. But so there was Eddie, and then we went to Meeks, who she talked to, yeah. and Kurt. Oh, and I thought Meeks's wife was also somewhat yeah, suspicious. Yeah, she was just like, ah, you get too close to Meeks. Yeah, she seemed so grumpy, and she like did. She seemed like she had other intentions and she kind of hated her husband now I mean, that I realized bit. that it was it was a like less than five line role it probably was just an actress who was like so thrilled to get that role that she's right? like yes. I'm gonna make it as memorable as I can I remember her <laughs> yeah, I mean we do we remember you yeah yeah, yeah good mean, job you did it she did it I, we thought you might be the murderer <laughs> way to go <laughs> but no but so th- I, this was a typical castle episode where we had so many different murderers or yeah. suspects Sussex. that we thought it was so Kurt uh, tells us this whole story that he came out to Anne to say I didn't do it you know and that's when Anne this is how it kind of all wraps up Kurt says you know I went to Anne I told her what what that I didn't do it and I've been hiding in the woods and she would bring me food and things like that and she promised to look into the case and that's when she asked for the murder file which she couldn't get and that's when she took time out from school and started working with this guy this all makes sense now if she looked at the case and she Mm -hmm. she was the first one to have the thought that maybe this guy was a creepy stalker professor that's when she started working for him he looked Mm -hmm. creepy yeah, he was very creepy. I thought he was creepy. <laughs> I mean, but so that that brings us back to him, and it kind of got fixed pretty quickly, especially after Kurt was saying, you know, we were both going to leave this school together. We were going to do this together. And the only reason, I mean, I don't think she documented who it was who was scaring her. Like, she never put it down, but they just put together that she met Kurt after she started having complaints, and she'd already had this professor, and this professor already had past issues with Which this. is one of those things where they castle... I mean, Beckett mentions this in the final scene when they... Yeah, this was another one of those ones where we at home could never have figured it out because we didn't have the information that she had. Yeah, it was just like a hurry up and go, you know? (laughs) Totally. Yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, we got the information, let's go, like, let's arrest him. Totally. It is him. It's like, let's have this big, long, silly sequence in a pit in the woods so that Castle can be funny. Right. And then we'll wrap up the actual murder like like that. 30 seconds or less. It's over. (laughs) It's over. Which, I mean, this is why we watch the show, so I don't know why I'm complaining. (laughs) I mean, maybe it's more of an observation. I mean, it was funny. The whole episode was funny. We figure out, we find the murderer of both girls, which is great. Kirk gets his life back. So, I mean, everything kind of wraps up in a pretty bow for the murder. And then it kind of teaches Castle, you know, to believe in things that are real as well as fake. Because Alexis and Beckett both say... Becca was getting all sentimental. I believe in, you know, what did she say? The green buds that pop out of the snow and yes. the, some building. And Alexis is like, I believe in people. And it's just, it was a big episode about what do you believe in? Like, where where, where does your passion lie, basically? And yeah. I think for Castle, rightly so. He's a writer. He's very imaginative and creative. Yeah. I mean, his passion does lie in the science fiction kind of and world. the what if and the yeah what like the possibilities are endless for him whereas for Beckett and Alexis they see the possibilities that are in front of them and that can actually take place and I like there was a little bit of consistency um, as cheesy as Alexis's reason for not having money was that she has <laughs> invested in her uh, in her friend who has ideas mm-hmm. for saving the world via. Green. Green. Right, and she's into that. She's uh, into that I was going to say, the, it's nice to have some consistency because her whole two-episode mm-hmm. um, kidnapping all happened because she went to an eco event. Yeah, so. conference. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think it was great to see that. I think it was a little silly to have him, you know, spraying her in the face with blue ink. I mean, that even was if, such a cool trick. Cool trick. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, if I can get that, I'll put it in my... You can't. Castle's that. very rich. I, <laughs> think. I mean, he's very rich, so... <laughs> like, if I can get that, it'd be such a Was great it, like, trick. powder? Was it Ink? I think it really? was ink. I think it was one of those like ink things, you know, like it blows up on you. Like when Yeah, you... because she still had it in her hair at the end. Yeah, of the she had episode. it like up here on I, her I face. Saw that. It reminds me of like, you know, when people get dye jobs and they have like the extra mm-hmm. dye yeah, on their I forehead. Do. I mean, I would be furious at my dad, but then again, I also probably wouldn't be, I would probably yes. have just told him and been like, I need money. <laughs> or just, or just food. Don't even give me money. Just give me food. But, um, I, mean, I might have even run my investment by my, my dad oh, in that I, case. I totally, I would. I was like, um, dad, mom, 
this is what's happening right yeah. now. Would y'all I like to be like yeah. investing yeah, in exactly. me, but not me, but really my friend, but yeah. I still have the ownership of right. it. Right, 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 right. Yes. 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 And you would think Castle would be down for that because he's got, I mean, he's got a lot of money. Like she said, well, people obviously will... he is even at the end. He's yeah. like, let's, let's find yeah. out more about your... So, I mean, this Castle episode was really nice. I liked it. It was happy-go-lucky, fluffy episode, but it was fun. It was lighthearted, and I feel like we're kind of going into a dark place with Castle next week. Do you mean that you're ready to talk about predictions? Predictions. Ooh. Yes. And now, I am. you're after Buzz TV. Predictions. Predictions. I wish that this was like a, one of those microphones that had a... I don't know what you're talking about. Effects. Oh. oh. <laughs> like, we like number one. Yeah. Prediction. Oh, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. I predict that it's going to be an emotional episode next week. Um, Certainly for Beckett. For Beckett and for Castle. I think this is where we come off. I think that's almost why we had kind of a fluffier episode this week because they don't want to overload us with drama going into something like this. So it seems like they're a perfectly happy couple. And then this, you know, your life kind of flashes before you when she's on this bomb. Um, And so I think that's going to be like a heavy episode. I don't really know where I see it going. I obviously see Beckett being okay. Yeah, my prediction is she's going to live. Yeah, I mean, I think well, it's very... Of course very... she's going to live. But, I mean, outside Star. of that, do you guys have any, like, predictions in regards to the show? I mean, I don't really have anything that I, I mean, see... it may be... If, if, <clears throat> if it's as dramatic a situation as that, obviously it may be an opportunity for the whole uh, precinct to come together and for us to finally see some of these people who have been gone for a while. I mean, also, we should, all, we should obviously mention mm-hmm. it's April 15th and... There were these bombings today in Boston, mm-hmm. so it was very weird to see that that's what some of the episodes going to be about next yes. week. I kind yeah. of sure they're thinking about yeah, that too. I kind of feel like Castle might rethink. I, I mean, I don't necessarily know what they'll do, but I think maybe the way they'll handle it, it might just be too soon, um, especially for those in Boston and people affected by, you know, the bombings at the Boston Marathon today. And I think Castle is even aware of it because I was saying to you guys, I'm from Boston, so I was really following the Twitter feed today and news yeah. and glued to my TV and. Castle was tweeting things. Castle ABC, their Twitter was tweeting things. They did tweet something, you know, sending their thoughts and prayers to Boston. And I just think this might be a little too soon. Uh, this, the idea of bombs, um, especially with something that kind of shakes a nation like this, because it's not just Bostonians who are there. It's people yeah. from all over the country, all over the world. So I think I don't know how they would go about that. I mean, they still ran the preview, so right, right. Yeah, I, I, I don't think, think the going... bomb might actually go off. Is it's probably like one of those like um, landmines where it's like. Well, I think oh, that's what it is. I think yeah, it's some like kind a, of like you detonate it it's yourself. Like a pressure right. sensitive like um, landmine. For the most part, I think it's just gonna be an episode that's really gonna focus on Castle and Beckett. Just like the thought of. I might lose you, and I think Esposito and Ryan might not play a big role, Mm -hmm. and uh, Laney might be back. I feel like it also, it seems like it's going to be a big deal, because they had a lot of people with them when they're going into this home before she steps on the bomb, so it kind of seems like it was a built-up thing, so maybe a kind of intense episode to begin with. I hope so. Yeah, so. (laughs) I need an intense episode. (laughs) Like, yes. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see next week. I mean, our thoughts go out to those in Boston and everybody affected, but we'll see what Castle does with it. I'm not really sure how they'll handle it. Um, maybe even just, you know, a viewer discretion advised before it airs or something like that. Um, I'm sure we'll hear about it before yeah. the episode happens, but if not, we'll definitely talk about it next week when we are here. Um, but thank you for tuning in. As always, I am Paige Sullivan. You can find me on Twitter at Paige Sell and the same thing on Instagram, and you can check me out at perfectpage.com. You guys can find me at at Samara Bay on Twitter and on Twitter, obviously. On the Twitter. at Samara Bay would probably Twitter. be on. Don't try to like at Samara Bay me on. In life. Yeah. <laughs> in any other um, and the smarty at the party dot com every Friday. News you can use to schmooze. Woo. Woo. And you can find me at Larice Shamar and at truepeoplesmedia.com. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you again next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.